Oh, 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 hello, everybody. Here comes your favorite clown, Stefan Satani. And I'm coming at you from the hot seat for a comedy advice podcast. And oh boy, what a special episode you guys are about to hear today with none other than Joyelle Nicole Johnson, comedian, actor. She's been in HBO's Crashing. She's been on the Impractical Jokers Cruise. For those of you that love the Jokers, <laughs> uh, sorry, I did not mean that. Sorry, Jokers. Please come on my podcast, Sal. Sal, please. And um, she's also, she has a new album coming out, Yell Joy, on Juneteenth very soon but guess what you guys can pre-order it secure that spot to get those laughs because laughs are limited guys and you can get them now link is going to be in the show notes she is just an absolute delight to be around and we just hit it off we hit it off oh so well so i hope you guys hit us off hit off with us i'm not sure but you get the gist that juicy gist Mm. No, no, I don't like those two words together. But uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please support Joyelle, buy her album, and follow her. Give her all the love. Show her some support. You are a bundle of joy, and thank you for being in my picnic basket because I love all of your guys' comments, all of your subscriptions when you follow me on Instagram. It gives me a spark of joy, and I just can't believe that I've I have you guys. I can't believe it. It's a moment of gratitude. This would be like the type of conversation we would have after I got you your favorite flavor of ice cream. Is it vanilla? No, it's not vanilla. You guys are more of like a Rocky Road crowd. I know it. I know it because you guys are not basic bees. You guys are complex bees. And I, uh, you know, I just feel you. Not literally, but I, my heart feels you. So thank you. From the bottom of my heart to the top of your heart. I think that's a good position. I haven't seen the heart of Sutra. <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to leave you with that as I continue to roll with these words and leave you with the main intro of the episode. Love, love, love. Mwah. All right. Let me just clear the pipes. Take a little sip of my small Phoenix jug. And that, let's see, this is with pros right here. We can tell it's not amateur hour because we're staying. Gotta be lubricated. That, see, that's where the good voice comes from. You've got a, a spl an amazing voice as well, by the way. Thank Very you. Mellifluous, I would say. Ooh, I like that word. <laughs> I don't know if it's a real one, but I heard it somewhere. And it I is. It good. Mellifluous, magnanimous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast, where we give you advice with a whole lot of comedy, a dollop of comedy. And my name is Steph Satani. I'm your host. Joining me today, a very, very special guest. She's a comedian, actor, and writer, seen on Comedy Central, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, The Tonight Show with Seth Meyers, and HBO's Crashing, and more. She was a writer on Broad City, a warm-up comic for Hassan Minaj's Patriot Act on Netflix, and she's got a new album, Kill a Yell Joy, on Juneteenth. Everybody, please welcome Joy L. Nicole Johnson. Snap, snap, oh my snap, snap, gosh, snap. you did that like the Ace Ventura inhale, like... <sighs> <laughs> Oh you know, my I, God. I, it's like people, I got to be like, you don't have to say all that. <laughs> thank you so much for saying oh, all those words. Well, thank you so much for doing all these amazing things. I mean, <laughs> I feel like it's definitely worth saying. And it is such a treat to have such a wonderful and hilarious person on the podcast. So thank you. And, and thank follow you. up question. I thrive on compliments. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm going to keep them coming. It's going to be like a McDonald's <laughs> supersized French fry compliment over here. <laughs> but I was going to ask, how how is everything going? How are you doing? I heard that you made the move from New York to Atlanta um, mid-pandemic. Was it a pandemic choice or was it um, premeditated? Yes, it, it was a completely pandemic choice. I realized that I wanted more space for less rent with central air and laundry. And I also wanted the opportunity to save the democracy. So I completed all of those tasks. Oh my gosh, turning the state blue while just completing those personal goals, amazing. Uh, you can't even tell me nothing. I, you, I, you won't hear the end of this until the end of time. What, what did you do? What did you call your Senator? I moved, okay? <laughs> I moved. I established residence. I voted. 
Oh my gosh. Well, it, it sounds like you're making uh, strides uh, moving to Atlanta. And I was going to ask too, the start of the pandemic, I, uh, you were actually on a cruise on the Impractical Jokers cruise. How, how was that? No, no, no. So the Impractical Jokers cruise was uh, during Valentine's Day week ah, last year. Okay. okay I okay, was on okay. the Joko cruise from March 7th to the 14th. And this is one of my like, you can't believe this party stories because those March 7th were the last cruises that were allowed to leave Florida. So Fort Lauderdale, March said they shut all the rest of the cruises down ah. after that. So they let us leave. And when we left, every time we turned our phones on, cause you know, you're on a cruise, you don't have service the whole time. Yeah. It seemed like the world was ending. <laughs> And we were like, are we going to be able to get, is there going to be an America to get back to? It was so crazy. We were supposed to go to Turks and Caicos. Turks and Caicos said, no, ma'am, y'all will stay on the boat. We, we do not want you here. What? You coming from America? No, no, you won't. We don't need your no, tourism. You. No, thank you. Dominican Republic let us off. Um, oh and yeah, we, so we only got to go to two of the three islands but woo, we got back and then the cruises that left our cruise was a week. So we got back on the 14th. Okay. And the cruises that were two weeks and three weeks got quarantined on those damn boats. Oh my God. I, I've never done a cruise, but I have had a fear of like kind of semi claustrophobic. So I don't know how I would fare on a cruise. Completely. You you did too. And I'm so glad you made it out without having to quarantine because I don't know how you feel about cruises, but I mean, it's... made it out without a quarantine, made it out without getting coronavirus. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Cause even a quarantine wouldn't mean that I had it. It's like true. everything was so beautiful. I'm just uh, thankful to whomever is up there, whatever you oh, call yeah. you, the universe, because Beyonce is always on beat and that's, <laughs> Beyonce came back right in time. Praise Beyonce. That is yes. just, I, I am so happy for you that you were able to you. just have countless Beyonce blessings. Thank that you. Face. And the, the, the most beautiful moment was uh, there's this singer, Amy Mann. I don't know if you know her. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So she's performing on the cruise ship, beautiful woman, but also very deadpan as far as her delivery and quiet. And she was the one who told me and my friend that Tom Hanks had coronavirus. And it was <laughs> it was the best slash worst person to hear this news from. Cause she's just ah! like, did, did you hear? Did you hear Tom Hanks has coronavirus? And we're like, Amy, is he dead? <laughs> Amy, give, give oh. me some more. <laughs> oh my god i almost thought you were gonna say she was singing it tom i mean it was like that that very you know low voice i love her so much and that like my favorite story that she was the one that told me and my friend and we were like oh no the world the world's gonna end tom hanks has coronavirus it's over <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. oh man well i i'm happy that things are starting to see the bright side. I was going to ask too, have you started to um, get back into stand-up and, and start performing uh, in public places or is that still a no-no? I got vaccinated in April. I got my second shot in Georgia. And then right after that, I had to fly to LA to do a showcase. And then I came to New York um, and taped the Tonight Show. So I was performing at the Comedy Cellar and have just been doing shows since then. Last night I did the Bell House and all these different pop-up shows. So now that I'm vaccinated, I'm out. Before I was vaccinated, I was not out. I was in the house doing Zoom comedy, baby. <laughs> the, the way you say it makes it sound like Zoom comedy is not as delightful as live comedy. <laughs> <laughs> just slightly, just slightly a little less. A little less preferable is Zoom comedy. Oh yes, yes, I've I've gotten that feedback quite a bit, and uh, but I mean from the from the few live performances you've been doing, it's just some monumental stuff. And I have to say, the your late so your late show set was phenomenal. I oh thank you. 
I loved, thank you. Yeah, I loved watching it. It was great. The bits about you and your boyfriend and the couple's therapist, <laughs> as well as the uh, all true uh, stories, <laughs> all true stories. And I'm and I'm so happy for it because a lot of uh, white men were dipping into my DMs to tell me it was hate speech, which touches my heart. Like I'm just so happy that not only did they watch it, but they had to seek me out to let me know. <laughs> that I hurt their feelings. So thank you to to y'all. I don't think they listen to this, but. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that's amazing. I was, uh, I, I slid in the DMs to be like, you elevated my feelings. So I really I appreciate this. But that's how you know you make an impact, you know, oh, one yes! way or the other. The DMs, that's the sweet spot for impact. Oh zone. my gosh. A guy told me he was like from, from 09 to minute to point 30 you're being very sexist. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you were listening. Good boy. Oh, my you, you won. God. I, I love how he timestamped his complaint. He too. From here to complaint. here. <laughs> I said the management has taken your, um, <laughs> your feedback <laughs> and is loving it. <laughs> that is Fascinating. And, and you know what? I'm really, I'm also excited about your new album, Yell Joy, which from what I've read is talking and finding some of the funny in some of those infuriating moments in life, which I feel like out of all of the comedy that I've seen you do, I feel like you're so, you're so talented at doing exactly that. And oh um, gosh, thank you. Oh my! So this is the compliment comedy podcast. Is this the comedy advice compliment <laughs> podcast? Thank you. It, it, it's well, I, only when they deserve it. It's so awkward when it, they're just a bad comedian, and I just have to <laughs> rain it down on them. I'm like, well, <laughs> from nine seconds to thirty seconds on your bit, it was really bad. Yeah, so it was really, really <laughs> bad. Um, I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart because you know it's like being a creative person. We do what we do, but then sometimes you're like, was that okay? <laughs> I don't know if that was okay. So thank you for um, saying that. I really appreciate it because all of my stuff comes from truth. Like every, every one of my bits, people will be like, did you get maced in the face by your roommate? And I'm like, yes, I don't, I'm gonna make that up. <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm sorry, I'm not that creative. I'm, I'm not <laughs> that creative. But I think, I think, because I, I, well, I'm not sure how every comedian does it, but I think there's a true talent in being able to take something that might be banal or monotonous and being able to add that twist or that flair that just provokes chuckles. And just two nights ago, I was watching one of your sets where you were talking about, you, you were talking about um, when you went to the Natural History Museum. And <laughs> yeah. The guy told you and your your friend that was also a lady, you ladies should check out, and I don't want to ruin the bit, but the way that you expressed, like obviously that's not a that's an annoying thing to to hear. And and the way that you're just like rage. I was listening yeah. on my headphones on my couch next to my wife, and she thought I was having a seizure because oh. I was just like, this is so good. It was followed by a seizure, so it was uh no. I'm <laughs> of joy but no it, it was just so good in the way that you were able to take something where it's like yeah this is a really frustrating situation you were able to describe your feelings but in the, this way where it was like rage and and just i don't know i don't know how to explain the science behind it but it made me chuckle and chortle and guffaw in a way that I oh think. my gosh chortle that's so funny yeah I I think my brother is a nerd enough to explain the science behind it he has done the research of the science of humor and there is a cadence and I feel uh -huh. like um as a musician mm -hmm. I you know I was a marching band of marching band nerd shout out to all my band geeks listening doo -doo. uh I you know I would I can read music. I can see how music affects people. And comedians have that same thing. We have the same, it's a musical thing, you know? And it's like that rage uh, was a beat. So uh, I, for your pointing that out, I'm realizing that now, oh, the rage was a, a, a drum, you know? Yeah. 
I, I, that's that makes a hundred percent sense. And I, I also it just started making me think of the volume and like tonality of things too, because mm -hmm. the way that for that example, when you were just like rage, it was almost like you didn't say it in like rage it was rage. the way yeah yeah the way you said it i was like oh my god it's it's just okay that's it this is how rage turns on and blah blah, blah. and the timing and the tonality was just beautiful and so thank you so. i also have to flick my rage on and off like that on a daily basis <laughs> a daily oh. basis so, where I was going to ask on the for like the biggest how, what have been the biggest like most recent triggers for you or things that have brought rage to you that you've been able to like turn into funny maybe they've been some things in yell joy in the album but um yeah I'm, I'm curious I mean I think process. my most recent my most recent right now I am trying to figure out the flip the funny in uh -huh. a supreme court decision so you know how they're, you know, Roe versus Wade, the uh -huh. abortion rights decision yeah. is about to be reviewed by the Supreme Court. And a lot of people on our side of the argument, me being a, a pro-choice person, mm -hmm. are saying that it might get reversed. And mm -hmm. that is the saddest possible, scariest possible situation because it's literally like Handmaid's Tale. Like I, I've had a bit about America going to the handmaid's tale. And this is how it starts. It starts with things like Supreme Court decisions being reversed. Yeah. And I'm like, I, if we're going to reverse Supreme Court decisions, let's reverse Brown versus Board of Education, because I want to go back to segregating the schools so that little black children can concentrate and not have to worry about racism when we are being raised. Damn. Heavy topic. <laughs> But I promise you, I am going to find the funny in that. <laughs> so that right now is rage, mother, mm, rage. I want to burn things down. Um, Man. But I need to try to find some funny to stay sane with it because that is like freaking scary, man. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's very interesting. I know that I had heard a couple of interviews with you and I think one of them, I, for the life of me, can't remember the name of the pod. I can remember one word, which was feminist, but extreme yes. feminist. <laughs> yeah. I, but yeah. Feminist but was, buzzkills or. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was uh it was a really cool conversation with you and I forgot the name of the host slash comedian, but you guys were talking about how you guys had um, actually met at a rally where you guys were kind of um, mm -hmm. confronting or or like defending one of these Planned Parenthood sites. I'm so sorry yeah. that I'm getting these details murky. Oh, no, 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 but no worries. I mean, it's a lot of details and clearly you are a deep diver. Kudos. Um, yeah, no, I work with a, a woman's reproductive rights organization called the Abortion Access Front and we go to red states and do comedy shows for the clinic workers and their independent clinics, which are different than Planned Parenthood's because they focus mostly on abortion. They do other care for women. However, abortion services, sometimes trans surgery, things like that happen there where mm -hmm. other hospitals and places in the area will reject it. Mm -hmm. So that's what the organization does. And they call me the protest whisperer because <laughs> I will be out there. I, Cause I loved, I, I need to talk to them. I need, I need you to first hear a person not yelling at you, but I also need you to understand that what you're saying, there's somebody the exact opposite and we can have a conversation. I want to, we want to choke each other, but we need to have a conversation. Sometimes I'm yelling, but <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I'm trying to talk. <laughs> and, and you know what, that exact point I was thinking of too, through the conversation that you had where you were, um, you were talking with, with some other folks that were, anti-choice and yeah. you were having a conversation with them and sometimes finding some flaws in their logic. Like there was a gentleman that had five kids at home and he was spending his time <sighs> at, at the event. So yeah, that was, was, it was so funny the way we got to it because we were just talking, talking, talking. He kept asking me questions and I kept answering them and we're good yeah. 10 minutes in and, and he said, yeah, five kids. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> why are you here? Sir, you are not anti-choice. You are anti-everything. You're anti-parenting. 
<laughs> What's wrong with you? How you gonna be anti-abortion but also anti-parenting? This is this is a weird hill to die on, buddy. Yeah, but yeah. It, it was... What I realized in those situations is that usually the younger people are the ones I can get to, especially like little virgin boys be out there trying to talk about how they are, and I'd be like, look. Once you get your little little penis wet and then come talk to me, have an accident, <laughs> get get the wrong girl pregnant and then come holla at me, your opinions. <laughs> Shut up. You haven't oh, even had my... sex yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of opinions should not be had by virgins. Virgins? <laughs> virgins shouldn't decide anything. <laughs> you shouldn't decide what appetizer is coming to this table full of people? You haven't lived the life. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Virgin. You want the blooming onions? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, We're yeah. going with the steak bites. We're going yeah. with the steak frites. You want the chicken fingers? Shut up. That's what. <laughs> That's shut such your a mouth. Virgin app. Jesus. Yeah, oh. man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. That might be a new bit. Look at you. Look at us. <laughs> yes. That's a, what a duo we are. This is amazing. Uh, mm. Well, I think that just going back to the conversations, I feel like, um, and I was going to ask, do you feel like having the, the mentality for you have a very, you're a staunch supporter, um, mm -hmm. but you are able to also have conversations with people, which I really admire. And do you feel like that type of perspective applied to comedy and your writing through, I mean, you were a writer for Broad Cities last season and um, with all the stand up that you write, I feel like that object or that like 360 approach is really useful in terms of um, finding all angles of the situation in terms of comedy, drama, emotion, everything. I mean, it don't always work. <laughs> like I said, sometimes I'm just yelling, but <laughs> why that's yell joy, hence, the name of the album yell joy because i just be yelling sometimes but i try my best to look at something multiple ways and it's hard sometimes you know because i really do want to think sometimes what could your impetus be for being a person who is wanting to control my body and i try to think about yeah. especially the women who are on that side of the argument because those are the ones that blow my mind the most like with the men you could chop it up to misogyny from for the most part but with the women you're like what is going on but then i realized my other thing that i am staunch about is therapy and people do not have enough therapy which is why they want to have control over other people's lives because if you are in control of your own life, you don't care about what other people are doing. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I couldn't agree with you more there too, because, and it shocks me how, uh, I don't know if they're just anti-therapy or just so, so many folks that might think, Oh, I, if I go to therapy, that's like, Oh, I need help. I'm a person that needs help. And we all need help. And I feel like there's help and there's self-discovery, which is like, yeah. oh, I might have a passion about, I don't know, mushrooms or or coffee and cold brew, but like, I don't want to spend an extra hour reading about how my brain works and how I work and is speaking yeah. with a live person, a professional that can help me figure things out that I just get stuck on. And so yeah. I, I just had a conversation with my parents where I just started getting into therapy. And I was really curious about cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started, I got a therapist and I told my parents, my mom, she made a face like, oh, are you, you okay? You in trouble there, sport? And I was like, no, she's like- Right, Bird? yeah, they're like, you're gonna kill yourself? Why did you? Yeah, she's like, you can't choose the apps tonight for dinner. And I was like, damn it. So, <laughs> no so one in therapy. <laughs> No virgins. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, uh, it, it's very interesting to me. And it's it was very cool to and, and one of your tweets stood out to me too, which I thought was brilliant where uh, I'll put a link to it in the show notes as well. But like winter is coming, get yourself a therapist. It's like, yeah, uh, especially last winter. And I, I'm even noticing being back in New York right now, having been in Atlanta, I, I flew to LA for a couple of days and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, our mental health as a as a collective consciousness, it had took a hit last year. Yeah. 
you know, we wasn't right before the pandemic. Now we're really <laughs> not right. And yeah. the people who have therapy, the people who are seeking therapy, I encourage you so much and kudos to you for being able to open yourself up to it because it's being vulnerable and you're going to dig up some stuff that you're not ready to face. And that's okay, but you got to face it or you're going to be walking around talking to yourself <laughs> on the streets of New York. <laughs> and I do that, but I'm a comedian. What's your excuse? You're not in therapy. <laughs> Go talk to somebody. It's worth the money. I totally agree. And uh, from your your um, late show bit too, talking about being in couples therapy with your yes. boyfriend, I Ugh. you know what? I just I hadn't thought of that to be honest with you. And my, my my wife and I, it's not like we're we hate each other, but I feel like therapy would be awesome for some of the arguments we might have, or just building a stronger <sighs> relationship. So. completely and even with me like he said i love you I'm, i wasn't even kidding in the bit like the second mm -hmm. he said i love you three months in i was like oh i, I need help <laughs> i was like i need help because i don't know a i don't know how to talk to men i've been a comedian for 15 years and single so i'm rude you know you'd be like oh you can't laugh at your boyfriend like you can't heckle him that's he's that's gonna hurt his feelings. You can't talk to people like that, Joyelle, that you love. So I needed somebody to just be like, hey, Joyelle, you know, take you can't do that. And it's just great to have that third party. It's just great to be like, this what he did this week. <laughs> and y'all can both come to the table with notes on Tuesday, he said, and you have to get it out. And having that weekly, it's just a weekly check-in. It's a weekly yes. check-in. You know? It reminds me when I first met my wife and we first started dating a month in, I had professed my love to her Aww. on a, on a napkin. No, it gets worse at a TGI Friday. <laughs> so yes. I think if we had couples therapy, we could have avoided that little disaster. <laughs> Another reason why I can't pick the apps anymore. It, there I you just, go. <laughs> you can't pick I'm the all... restaurant. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Why are we at Fridays? <laughs> I yeah, like I, get out of here. Hungry, I'm hungry for love <laughs> and I don't know where to go. So it's just ah, oh, it's awful. But they had the Jack Daniels, um, the Jack Daniels chicken fingers. Those were delicious. Oh, cool. It's, that's now you're talking my language. This I'm is. a Jersey girl. <laughs> Plenty of Fridays and but by the way, it was it Jersey, um where I professed my love that I used to live in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, it's from from the town over Union, New Jersey. No way! Oh yeah. my god! My first boyfriend is from Elizabeth. <laughs> oh my gosh, that that is so funny. Because I was going to ask where you were from. Union, we were there. My wife and I drove through there all the time. My wife went to the gym in Union, and uh, uh -oh. great, great town. Elizabeth, yeah. a little dangerous, but you know, other than that, yes. It was fine. <laughs> That's where we would go to steal. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth and Irvington. We would go to steal. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Another gem of a town that I have frequented. That is yeah. so great. So great. <laughs> um, well, before we get into the advice, I just want to, I have a, a hot question, hot potato question. <laughs> was going to ask about the... Um, the warm up because you also did the warm up for Hassan Minaj's uh, oh my gosh the uh, Patriot project Act. yes Patriot Act sorry mm -hmm. the names are I, as you get older 33 i just can't remember words oh adorable phrases. yay jesus year congratulations you made it <laughs> and, and 30s i was curious, for the best oh man it's i, I personally love it besides not being able to remember words i feel like it's just so cool i obviously i can wear my hair however i want because i look like i'm auditioning for the lord of the rings but on a oh, hawaii nice. vacation and uh you know i i have money now because i actually have a job and yeah. it's just it's fantastic my wife told me she loved me back in my 30s so ah! <laughs> i'm on a roll it's amazing killing it it's just gonna get better and better every year your, your legs, <laughs> your knees might leave, but it's okay because you'll have a peace of mind. <laughs> oh man, I've got some icy hot on knee number one right now as we speak. But yes. uh, Patriot Act, Warm Up Act. I was going to. I was so curious about. Is it very similar to 
performing in front of a crowd for Slayer. It's weird to say standard stand up, but yeah. Uh, what are some of the differences between doing a warm up act for a TV show and uh, like stand up show? Um, I think the biggest difference is you want to get the crowd engaged. So you're specifically yeah. being like, where are you from? What do you do? How do y'all know each other? And you, oh. you want to, to get them comfortable enough Mm -hmm. for something for some reason i don't know why that's a specificity for warm-up because hosts do it sometimes uh -huh. but for a warm-up for a tv show it they specifically want to do that because i learned from other um people ryan reese is a great warm-up comedian he did the warm-up for seth myers and when i got the gig for hassan i was like can i come to work with you one day and he let me come to work with him and this was after i taped the show and I just got to watch him do it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what you do. I see it. So it's, you're not doing material as much. I would, because I had to come out twice. So the mm -hmm. first time I would do, um, you know, crowd work. And then the second time I would do material when I came out because they would go oh, do God. rewrites after his first little pass of the show. Um, oh, so you went yeah. twice in one episode. So they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I come out for about 10 minutes. He'd do a whole pass of the show. They go mm -hmm. back and do rewrites in real time. And so I was out there doing stand up, and then he'd come back and do the rewrites after that. And one time, the first season, they left me out there for 40 minutes. <laughs> oh my God. They left me out. It was the final show of the first season. They left me out there for 40 minutes. And when you're doing warm up, you're talking super fast. I'm like, da -da 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 -da. like the cadence uh -huh. is extra. The metronome's going super fast. And about 28 minutes in, the stage manager was like, Do you need some water? I was like, Hell yes, <laughs> I need water. I'm dying. Where are they? What's oh. going on? Oh my God. I, I was just thinking about that as you were saying they were doing rewrites while you would go up the second time. And I'm like, God, that's like, my wife being like the turkey's almost done just stall the guests and yeah. i'm like who wants to play uno and yeah like, you don't know what to do that's oh yeah crazy i learned that night kevin Hart said you're gonna learn today i learned that night because man listen i was pulling bits out of <laughs> all the places. craziest play all <laughs> stuff i hadn't thought of in years and i'm like so you so you went to NYU, right? And how was your fourth year? Uh, who was your roommate? Like, just, it got real desperate around, around minute 24. <laughs> oh, oh my God. And then when I, got, I went, yeah, after it, we had a party uh, cause it was the class night and I walked in and all the crew just applauded me. So that was a great moment oh. because they were like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I want to stab y'all. That, <laughs> that is incredible. And, and just thinking about, I know that you've talked about and are an incredible storyteller. Did that Thank help you. flex and grow those muscles for like crowd work? Or did you already have those muscles and you were just showing them off at that point? And, um, it, it depends on the situation because I'm going to tell a story regardless. You know, there's but so much crowd work that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, after a while, you're just like, I want to get into my bits. So right, I did right. learn to, fl I more so learned to flex the crowd work muscle when I did that, because I'm not a crowd work person. I, I don't usually host, I host, but mm -hmm. I prefer to be the middle or the end act because <laughs> right. hosting is such a different, you know, beast as a different mm -hmm. side of the brain. And there's certain people that are just amazing at being a, a hype man so that's when you're warm up you got to be the hype man and and get the people pumped to watch it but like once the show comes out like once hassan came out they were like yeah it's us it's all of us we're all doing it <laughs> <laughs> that that's really cool that you were able to do that and be able to you know have that energy and then you know also do the the middle work or the the you know telling the stories and telling the jokes i remember it just reminds yeah. me of watching what was it crashing where mm -hmm. 
you were sitting at the table at the comedy cellar with Whew. Jessica Kirsten, Dan Natterman, yeah. and you were when you went on stage, you were doing a little bit. This was the first episode I saw you on playing with yes. Pete's sex toys, putting the feather in his cap. Yes. <laughs> we had to improv that. And it was funny because it's like, y'all, y'all could have warned us. It <laughs> there were so many moments where you'd be like, I was sitting in my trailer for three hours. You could have told me I was gonna be pulling stuff out and you wanted me to make jokes about it y'all could have been like this is the bag joyelle maybe come up with some stuff they wanted it in real time so i was in real time like my gosh i i'm i'm completely convinced that people sit in rooms and think about how to torture comedians and that was um one of those (laughs) how can we make stand-up harder i think people as an agenda for some people. <laughs> I I 100% agree with you because, well, first off, I thought it was odd. Like all of you guys did great on the improv. I didn't know that it was improv like that. So props to that. And props to two, the props. <laughs> yeah, props to the props. And then also, I feel like you're right because it's like when I was saying standard stand up, I was like, I mean, I don't think that's a thing because sometimes people are like, hey, do you want to do comedy in my garage or like, in a dive bar or on a boat at a like, wedding y- yeah yeah all these different <laughs> in places. a tree it- we're gonna throw water at you in the middle of your set and then the crowd's gonna turn their backs to you but keep going we you're, told you're them to amazing. do that yeah, yeah you're doing yeah, great exactly could you do it a TGI Friday? We we yeah. got these apps coming out. This guy's gonna profess his we have, love. We have a Jack Daniels special and um <laughs> we're gonna need you to make jokes right now about Jack Daniels only. That's it, go. Oh man, oh wow. (laughs) This, Joyelle, this has been incredible. We're gonna wind down with some advice from the Reddit advice column. We've got some questions there. Before we dive into them, I like to get centered with an inspirational quote. So Mm -hmm. I've got one in my bag, but I usually like to ask my guests, just in case they've got any inspirational quotes top of mind that help get them inspired, help, um, yeah, get them through those dark days. And do you have- Oh my gosh. Yes, uh, there's a movie called Being Julia uh, starring Annette Bening. It's the second time she lost her Oscar. Um, (laughs) And uh, she plays this London theater actress and she's Mm -hmm. talking to this brand new actress and the girl's talking about how nervous she is to go on stage. And she said to her that nerves are the respect that we pay our audience. And I think that that's one of my favorite quotes is being a stand-up performer, but I also think that can go in any, anything, any profession that you have. If you're a dressmaker or a chef or a tennis player, you know, you're nervous, that's a good thing. That means you respect what you're doing and that you want people to be happy with what you've created, so. What a fantastic quote. And I must admit, I did <clears throat> see it on one of your recent Instagram posts as I think it was for your late night set. And oh, yes. Yeah, I, like, I used to have a terrible case of stage fright. So going oh, from that to yeah. that was crazy. <laughs> a very, I, I also had a terrible case of stage fright. So th- that quote really slapped. Oh, I shouldn't use that lingo. but. <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> they say they want that slap. <laughs> <laughs> but it really resonated with me. And uh, I think it's a great quote. It's very nice to hear the origin. I thought it was a Joyelle original, actually. So. Oh, I wish I wish I was that cool. I don't know who's original that I don't know if that actress, the actual actress used to say it, or mm-hmm. if the person wrote it in the screenplay. But I just remember when I heard that I was like, Oh, switched my whole switched up everything that's beautiful and i'm gonna pass it on and everyone that's listening is also gonna hear this now so it's just gonna change perspectives all across yeah the world nerves are okay uh all right well what a wonderful quote i've got a quote too it's actually not by any person whatsoever it's by a robot and the robot's name is Inspirobot. And its main purpose is to use AI to just plunge into the literature of Shakespeare, maybe the Bible, maybe Ooh, some nice. comic books. Yeah, who knows? And it just comes up with 
uh, an inspirational quote. So Joel, I'll read this one. You can tell me how it speaks to you. It's a, a brief one this week. Uh, Inspirebot says, <clears throat> tickling each other includes tickling ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I, I Making feel, others happy. You got to be happy yourself. I agree. Yes. I feel like it tickled me in that way. So I feel mm -hmm. um, this was a very, a full tickle circle. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if that could be a thing after the pandemic, but if but that's uh, what I had in crashing, I had the, the tickling buttholes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Oh, a real full tickle circle. This came around to wonderful. There we go. All right. Now that we're inspired, we're going to dive into some of these questions. This first one from the Reddit advice column, it says, how to tell my friend to stop talking over me and listen to me. I have a friend. When we are together, she only talks about herself and never let me share my opinions or my experiences on the same topic. When I get the chance to talk about myself, she would just ignore me and talk to other people. I'm really annoyed by that, but I don't know how to tell her any idea on how to deal with this. Joelle, I have a feeling that you don't have this problem. You're very charismatic, great voice. People listen to you. Is that right? Yes. Um, and I, but I do get talked over. And that was my biggest thing in individual therapy is using my voice. Cause my whole life growing up, I was very muted. So all of this charisma and everything has just been of late being formed. So I used to be that person that would get talked over and, um, I would say, write it in the notes app, get all your words together, copy and paste and send her a little message. And if, and if she takes offense, then y'all ain't supposed to be friends. But if you come from a beautiful, honest area, I think the person should be able to listen. That's not as funny. I'm, I'm trying to really change people's lives with this advice. This is great. <laughs> this is great. This, I, I would love, I think that's great. You know, cause I also, as charming and, gre and gregarious as I am, I was a shy little boy. And, um, yeah. you know, that usually didn't profess my love for people after one month. Right. I, this right. was constructed right. and developed through uh, time and lots mm -hmm. of intention and decisions. So I think maybe, yeah, just tell them in the notes, give them a Google doc, share the link. Yeah. You, a voice memo. If you want to do voice a voice memo. memo and be like, Nicole, this is what I really thought about that documentary that we were talking about last night and then send that through and then share those opinions and she'll get them. And then she'll be like, you know what? This is real. This is good. I was also going to say, try whispering. Cause then maybe the, she'll, <laughs> she'll feel like she's trying. You're like, is, is, am I missing something important? What's going on? Whispering oh, yeah. is funny, but I more so bet be like, Hey, Nicole, uh, stop talking over me. <laughs> you talk <laughs> over me. Please stop doing that. Um, I really appreciate it. I care about our friendship, but if you keep talking over me, I'm not going to want to eat chicken fingers with you anymore. So oh, oh, I, I will have rage if you do rage. That. And then if you do it in the notes app or a voice message, you don't have to have as much pressure of having to do it in person. Cause don't let people pressure you into having confrontations. Cause I am very non-confrontational. I love this. Absolute gold on a comedy advice podcast, people. <laughs> you better be listening here and sharing with your friends. All right. Last question before we bid oh. ourselves adieu. It adieu says, to you <laughs> and you and you. <laughs> that was my like Steve Martin French impression, I guess, from Pink Panther. But uh, mine was right. from The Sound of Music. <laughs> oh, well, better than mine. It says, I want to get a pet, but I don't know how to take care of an animal. What should I learn and how should I proceed? That's it. That's basically the meat of the question. That's Joy, start with a, a plant. I do. I do not have a pet. My boyfriend is the closest thing to a pet because I have to <laughs> feed him and make sure that he walks. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> And it's hard. It's hard. I want to do, I want a little puppy dog, but I also know that I don't, I, I killed an aloe plant recently and that's, those are hard to kill. So start Ooh. with a plant. <laughs> I would say <laughs> learn how to keep a plant alive for give, give yourself two 
a year or two with a plant. I like that. And start with a, a an easy plant like a yeah. cactus. Aloe. <laughs> or or aloe. And then that's the true test. If it dies, you, you kill an aloe for you. You are not ready to have a baby or an animal. So yeah. Once you, if it dies and you have to dig it out from the bottom of the pot, you actually can see it says don't have children mm -mm. or have pets. That's so. a fortune teller for your ass. <laughs> you cannot, ma'am, you killed aloe. So we are going to not have a baby anytime we, soon. No, no children whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, what a perfect ending to this wonderful podcast. <laughs> Joy L. Thank you so much for joining and imparting some of your wisdom, sharing some of your stories and just being an overall fantastic guest. Awesome. I love your soundproof panels. That's what mine look like at home in Atlanta. You're making me miss my house. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Usually people tell me how boring my place looks. So I need to like make one of them colored, maybe a, a hot pink one just to add flair. But little flares. Yeah, mine are colorful, um, but they're arranged on the wall, kind of interesting like that. So I love that. Oh, oh, nice. This was all my wife's decision. I would have had them clumped together, just helter skelter all over the place. But she ended up doing that. So I'll, I'll pass on the compliment. But th but I was also going to ask, uh, where can people find you? What have you got to plug? What have you got going on? Yes, we got the first album coming out Juneteenth. That's June 19th, 2021. So get Yell Joy available across all platforms. And you could also listen to it when it's going to be streaming on Sirius XM and Apple Music and all that thing. So yes, listen to me. Amazing. And if you guys are like, oh, no, I, I can't be. It's going to be in the show notes. Calm down. Take a deep breath. <laughs> And you just click on the show notes and it's available for pre-order. So you can yes. pre-order it. Just go on over there, click, use your thumbs, whatever you want to do and uh, go on over there. Well, opposable please. thumbs, it separates us from the animal. <laughs> and the aloe vera plants. So yes, <laughs> they don't have no thumbs. That's why they die. Uh -huh. Oh, exactly. That's why they can't take care of themselves. Like a big boy. Mm -hmm. like, Somehow. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you so much, Joyelle. Thank you to everybody listening, you little comedy advice cherubs, you treats. <laughs> thank you so much. And we'll talk at you next week. And that's the episode. That's it. There's no more. I'm so sorry. You can try and scrape the bottom, but there's not even a crumb left except for this outro. So thank you guys so much for staying till the end, drinking every last drop of this episode. And if you want more, I do have free refills, but you have to subscribe but just go back on that catalog and there's so much more. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube, hit those comments or write those comments, I guess. Don't hit anybody that's commenting and say hi. And don't forget to support Joyelle. She is a blast. You guys are a blast. Let's all just explode together. Thank you. Gooch smooch. Mwah.